Hi, Matthew Deer, back again for another interview. This time, we're going to take advantage of this beautiful spring day, and we're going to be trying to interview some horses, or a horse, because I've always wondered what it's like to be a horse. I'd like to be a horse. Let's go see if any horses are out in pasture. Oh, I see Roscoe. Oh, he spooked a hawk, Cooper's hawk, beautiful bird. There's Roscoe saying hi to the kids. Let's go in a little closer and see if we can say hi to Roscoe. Beautiful day to be a horse, don't you think? Here. Do you like dandelions? I'm a little starstruck, Roscoe, because uh, you are such a handsome dude. Do you enjoy being out here in the pasture, just looking and being? Can I ask you a question right here? Have you ever spoken or made a sound into a microphone? I could take off my hat too. You might not like that. You smell the many, many shows that me and my band have done on this microphone. I apologize for that. Let's, let's call that part one of our meet and greet with Roscoe. An all-knowing, omnipotent being. Let's go ask another horse question. Let's go ask another horse a question. <laughs> Our sweetest kid is custom title number one. The Matthew Deer Show. Hey, what's up? Sitting here rocking out, thinking about a big problem that we're approaching. I wouldn't say the problem is here now, but I've noticed that the problem is coming. And I want to talk to you about it today. And that is the problem of future rock shirt wearability. Let me set my axe down. Hold on. Just turn, turn down my axe. Okay. A lot of us rockers like to stick a pick right in there. That's what I'm going to do. That's a Squire Mustang for you. Hi, okay. hey, come on up with me here. Step into my house of wares. My house of blues. First, you got to take your stool out of the dirt. You know what? It's a good boot stool. I'm going to set my, my boot on there for the time that we're together. Okay. Hi. Welcome back. So what I was saying is future rock shirt wearability. F S F R S F R S W ability. I'm talking about long term rock t shirt wearability. I'm talking decrease in thread count. I'm talking an increase in specialty cottons, modal cottons, Pima cottons, things that should not be in rock t shirts. And I'm going to tell you why. 
long time ago, I'd say about 15 years ago, I was on Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles near Hollywood, the Hollywood. And I went to a store that specialized only in resale rock t-shirts. I got a couple good finds there. But you know what? Those rock t-shirts, they started off very coarse. They started off in a very high thread count, very thick thread count, something that would probably feel a little bit like cardboard itching your neck the second you bought it. But you know what? 20, 30 years later, they were perfect. Tissue box quality rock t-shirts. I'm talking fade. I'm talking holes. I'm talking stitches coming out in the right place. Now here's the problem. These days, a lot of bands, I won't say your name, Radiohead, a lot of bands are using very soft cottons and poly blends, things I talked about earlier like modal cottons that's made from bamboo fibers. I'm talking coconut thread shirts. I'm talking hemp shirts. Hemp, I don't know so much about. Maybe it's good. Could be hardcore. I don't know. Now, I'm talking anything too fine quality. I'm going to call you out, but you're not a rock guy. If you're buying one of those Rick Owens t-shirts, you're going to get holes, okay? They're awesome. They fit great, but you're going to have a lot of holes in them. Don't try wearing a belt with those shirts. Now, Here's what I'm talking about. You need to look out for anything that says pre-washed, anything that says acid washed, anything that says pre-tumbled, anything that says rock worn. None of that stuff is going to suit you in about 10 to 15 years, and I'll show you why. I got proof. Let's take a look here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. First up, Sonic Youth, album's goo. I got this about 10 years ago. It's made on a Gildan t-shirt, heavy cotton, 100% cotton. This thing's gonna last the ages, okay? I'm gonna wear this shirt in about 10 years and feel even better. This is a good shirt. This shirt, way too soft. Look at this. This is my shirt. Black City, 2010. This shirt's on its way out. Now, this is a good shirt to wear to the gym. If you still have the shirt, I'm kidding, this is a great shirt, wear it, okay? But for you guys right now, this shirt's too thin. It's not going to last. This should end up in the recycling pile very soon. Look at this. Can you see me? I can see you. I can see you through the shirt. I shouldn't be able to see you through a shirt for at least 20 years, okay? Let's take a look at another good shirt. doesn't matter when the shirt's from. I didn't get this shirt when the Modern Lovers first put out a t-shirt. I don't even know if they did, but I got this shirt. But when I got this shirt, it was made like a good rock shirt. What are we talking about? This is a Hanes, classic Hanes, 100% cotton, heavy cotton again. You're getting a wide band on the collar. You're getting a good fade on the logo already. And this shirt's got at least another 30 years in the running being a great rock shirt. Let's take a look at a bad shirt. This is a curveball. This is a Nirvana shirt, okay? I love Nirvana. Like I said, it's not about the band. It's about the maker or the person who made the shirt. I actually got this from the airport, okay? From Sub Pop themselves. They chose a very fine cotton shirt on this shirt, and it's just too thin, okay? It looks cool now. Yeah, impress your friends. But in about 15, 20 years, when you really want to rock, this shirt's not going to cut it. It's going to be crumpled up in your lint box in your dryer over the years. This shirt's done, okay? I can't even look at this shirt anymore. I love Nirvana. This is a local, local good shirt here. This is Bear vs. Shark. Doesn't have to be an old band. You don't have to be Sonic Youth goo. You don't have to be Modern Lovers. You can be Bear vs. Shark, an awesome local Ann Arbor group that comes back every now and then. Bars of Gold, they rock. They probably got good shirts too. But this is Bear vs. Shark on a classic Anvil. This is an Anvil, 100% cotton. Heavyweight shirt. I could wash my car with a shirt and still wear it in 20 years. Let's look at it. You want to see a curveball? Here's a curveball. This is adult. Body to body communication. What am I gonna say about this shirt? You don't know. You're like, what is he gonna say? Great shirt, okay? Adult went for a good medium weight shirt, not too fine, but it's just heavy enough to last through the ages. Body music t-shirt that's gonna make you feel good 20, 40, 60 years down the road. Bet you they will be. I'm gonna go to their concert front row with this shirt on, and all the little kids are gonna look at me and say, man, that guy's fucking badass. You didn't hear that, Ocean. Last but not least, I have a recent Little Dark Age MGMT band t-shirt. Now, here's the deal with this one. It's signed, so I ain't never washing this shirt. So, Curveball, even though it's fine quality, even though it's a little bit on the thin side, I'm not washing this. So, this one's going to stay fine forever, okay? Because I'm never washing this shirt.
even if it's white. Got Simon in mirror image reverse. And I got everybody else down here somewhere. Love this shirt. Never washing it. Staying pure. Staying good. Good choice, MGMT, on this quality shirt. Now that's it for now. I hope you learned something from this. And I hope you uh, go to your closet or your next concert and buy the right shirt for the right time. It's important. We need long-term rock shirt wearability. Okay? See you next time. Thanks a lot for joining me. I'll stare you down all night. Hey everybody, I'm out here uh, doing something fun. Thought you should join me. You could do this at home. Shake that good. An even coat. That does not smell good. Yes, it does. Mm hmm. That's just a pretty color blue, isn't it? Oasis blue. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's gonna do it right there. Here we are on step two of the process. Check it out. Let's see what we're gonna do here. You're gonna need glue gun. You're gonna need some plywood painted blue or whatever color you prefer. And some giant googly eyes. Alright, check us out. Lots of eucalyptus that you can eat and bamboo. <laughs> I forgot. I'm a panda. I eat bamboo. Oh, yeah. Roscoe says, this is my show. Get out of here. I'm the one that's going to say hi to the people. That's the kind of horse Roscoe is. He's the boss. And I don't know who this handsome little light tan pony here is. Yes, hello. Hi, how are you? We're here with uh, a beautiful light tan blonde mane. You, you're you're a surfer horse, aren't you? You look like a maybe a, a Dale, Kevin. Those beautiful lush spring grass around. It's like your salad bar just popped up. Hi, how are you? See the horses are. Horses are very much aware of everything that's going on. Let's get some, some they can't reach quite. They do. All of these horses have their own personalities. Do you like some dandelions? There you go. Yeah. You won't get shocked. Are you trying to, you might be saying you don't want that. That was a no thank you. I'm not into that idea. Oh, hello. Hello, handsome. Now, do you have this on so you don't bite the other ones? Is that what it is? You can smell? Do you want to smell? Hi. Yes, hello. Hi. Well, yes, I know. I'm saying hi to everybody. Is that okay? Is it okay if I say hi to everybody? Yeah. Now, this horse might be a biter. Might be a nipper. Uh, or they might have it on a special diet and they don't want it to eat very much of this uh, grass out here. 
You got a soft nose, yes you do. This is soft, it's so soft. You're soft too, hi, yes, okay, hello. Beautiful spring day. It's a good time to be a horse, I'd say. Yes it is, yes it is. Here, you can smell my hands more. Does that smell okay? Yeah? Yeah, you're trying to nip at this guy. Here on the Matthew Deer Show, we usually ask the most pressing questions. Thumbs. Overrated? Now, a horse like Roscoe doesn't have to say much. You know, we've gotten to know him over the years. He's a gentle, gentle leader. Definitely the boss of, of the horses when we see him around. Um, you know, horses are great like that. They can really just kind of express so much with just their eyes and their presence. You know, just a little little nod here or a walk away there and he's gonna he's gonna tell you what he likes and doesn't like uh, he doesn't even have to snap at you or or kick or make a fuss but the fact that he's up at the fence right now kind of just saying hi and kind of just checking us out I think shows that he's a little bit trustworthy of us over the years and he knows he can walk away anytime he wants to what's your favorite number Roscoe Mine too. Beautiful hair. He'll do a styling tips with Roscoe next time we come around. Pony hat there. Yeah, oh, there you put it in the back part. This is real. Getting used to it now. You feel me?
Myrtle is actually quite an interesting plant. It's been used since ancient times as an herbal treatment for many, many ailments. You can make teas out of it. You can make it into soups. You can grill it, uh, saute it like you would a spinach or other leafy green. But let's take a closer look here and I'll tell you a little bit more about the common nettle and why it shouldn't be uncommon in your life. All right, so common nettle uh, it does have these little tiny spindly uh, spines on it that can really give you a little little numbing uh, pain as you can kind of harvest them and make them into all sorts of good things uh, you know for your body. Um, I like to make it into a tea. I think it's really tasty. Now, common nettle has an array of uh, minerals and vitamins, uh, fatty acids, amino acids, polyphenols, all sorts of the good things that you want in your body uh, to act as antioxidants, kind of fighting away all the inflammation and the, the bad stuff that comes with being a human in today's day and age. I'm going to take some of this with me back home and see if I can make it into a tea that we can enjoy uh, together. That one plant gave us, let's say, about a cup of leaves here, give or take. Oh, that might be good for a whole pot. But let's just do tea for two. Do you want to have some tea with me today? I found that if you make it in a cup that says love on it, it just tastes a little bit better. I can't wait to drink this tea. I wonder if one of the benefits of drinking metal tea is to calm the burning sensation caused by the metal stinging. God, I hope so. Telling you everything that is telling about me, my strength, my weakness becoming our strength, overcoming the idea of insecurity, surrounding me with comfort and affection, simple times, no corrections, grounded in knowing the past is no different from the future, the vast and expansive endless future, our future, their future, a single future. A single present, shared equally among us, touched by this notion deeply, deeply knowing you, your strength, now my strength, our strength becoming their strength, our strength, satisfied in the present knowing the past is now the future, shared paths from this eternal point of time, spreading like a bright light in every direction of space, and time. From this moment onward, forever. It's recording. Let's go sit our spots. Hi, this is Dawson. I'm here with my dad, dear, and ask him some questions. Hi, dad. What is your favorite color? What is your fla flavor popsicle? My favorite flavor popsicle is lime. I like... Raspberry. Do you like raspberry? Do you like raspberry? I do, I do like raspberry. But I, I love really the best. I don't like lime. No, I like lime. I like only raspberry, but I like ham was the best. Mm. Trolls are, are very fun, fun to work with. But, but microphones are for microphones are for doing music. Microphones. But I love it. Do you like to make music? Yeah! What's your favorite kind of music? I love the Up and Down remix. Yeah! Yeah! It's not by Interactive. It's not by Interactive. That's not by Interactive. It is by Interactive. By the real one. No, the original is by Interactive. I love the Up and Down. What's your favorite thing to film? Outside. Outside. 
My favorite thing to film outside is painting. Oh, painting. I love painting. Yeah. What else? I like to film things in nature. I love to film things in forest. What kind of things do you see in the forest? Animals and plants. I think that was a good interview, Ocean. Can you play in the house while it's raining? That's a great question. Uh, in the house when it's raining, we can play Legos, oh, do Play-Doh. We can do game. Yeah, or puzzle. Puzzle is my favorite thing to play when it's raining. We can you play outside with Sunny? Or Sarah. Thank you for watching. Full of good sound. What do we find next on Pushing for Sound? Mm -wee. Look at all that sound waiting to be caught. Look at all that sound waiting to be caught. Hoo wee, look at that sound waiting to be caught now. Some good sounds in there, I'll tell you what. Oh yeah, nothing but good sounds hanging out in there. Look at all that good sound. Waiting to be pulled out. I guess a big old sound in there, I'll tell you what. Some big sounds waiting to be caught there. Little pony hat there. Yeah, oh, there you put it in the back part. This is real. Getting used to it now. Are you filming? All right, welcome back to Late with Lizard, with Lizard. Um, I'm Lizard, I'm, I'm the studio technician for Matthew Deer. Um, a huge Diplo fan, um, and just pretty much lover of all things music. If I'm not tuning a console or working on a synthesizer, um, I'm just enjoying music in my spare time when I'm walking to and from uh, the studio. Uh, I listen to music in my pods, uh, just really hanging out all the time with music, and just hoping that Diplo sometimes stop by the studio and we hang out. But today, um, for my first guest ever on Late with Lizard, thank you, Matt, for letting me have a show, is James. So, hey James, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's great. Uh, happy to be here on the show. Uh, long time fan of the show. Oh. Honored to be here. I didn't know you. Were, that's so cool. I, I, I didn't think a guest would know who we are. I really, am, I'm happy about that. I think it's a good start. Um, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, and when I was going through all my options for for guests to have on the show, I thought, hey, let's get James on because James is a really cool guy. He's really nice, and it's, it seems like the right kind of guy to really spread the love that you have with 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 everybody over here. Well, thanks. That's a huge honor. Oh, absolutely. How did you first find music? And I love hearing how people find music. How did you find music, James? Well, uh, I my parents had a pretty big record collection, and that's the first thing I remember when I was a little kid. We would gather around and listen to records together as a family. We had a piano as well. My mom's pretty musical, so she plays the piano. And, uh, Did she tune it? Did she know how to tune the piano? She, I, she had a, a, a professional tuner come in. Uh, I like to meet that guy. He's probably pretty cool, right? He was a cool dude, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was a visually impaired gentleman. Auditorily. Um, not impaired. He was, seems like he's probably pretty, pretty keen with his ears, I, I would assume. Yeah, if anything, I think it was sharper. Just, Your piano yeah, was sharp? Yeah. Well, that, not until he until he got there. I fixed that. Um, I'm really excited to maybe one day meet your piano tuner. But anyways, you were saying you guys used to gather around and play Christmas songs and, and just like 
kind of shoot the, shoot the turkey around the piano and everything, right? Oh yeah, uh, and and not only my mom but my aunt and my cousins, uh, they all play it too, and they would mess around and sight read. And I think when you're a kid and you see older people in your family doing something, then you want to do it. Wow, that's just so cool. So, have you ever heard of the Danielson family? Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of like that, right? Yeah, I guess minus the Christianity part, but yeah. Yeah. Same but, idea. Well, you don't have to go there, but you are a bluegrass band, right? No, no. But I, uh, I love bluegrass. Yeah, me too. You ever heard um, of Telly Ride Festival? Is really cool. Bella Fleck, Bella Fleck Tones. Um, Future Man. Future Man. Cheeky Man. Moody Man. You know, there's so many mans out there, really. So we just. Mantronic. Method Man. Method Man. The Wu Tang documentary is so good. I don't know if you saw that too. Maybe one day I'll have Wu Tang on here. That'd be pretty crazy. I don't know if I can fit them all. Um, but we'll see. If we get Diplo, I think, you know, Diplo knows. I'm sure he knows Rizza or something, and we can get those guys on too. Have you ever, have you ever met Diplo? That's kind of my big question I wanted to ask you tonight. Uh, no, I've never met Diplo. No? He did an MGMT remix one time. I know that. No way. Okay. Yeah, so. So are you, are you, are you friends with MGMT? What's, what's up with that? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're friends. Like, I, uh, it's like in the band. Wait. You, you play in MGMT? Yeah, I mean, traditionally. Holy yeah, shit. I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, you fucking tell me this guy plays in MGMT. Jesus Christ, man. It's amazing. Oh, okay. Is, is this guy kidding? Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with James from MGMT. Whoa, whoa, James, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're going to have to splice that whole intro out. I did not know you were in MGMT. I didn't know you played with MGMT. So, ladies and gentlemen, James from MGMT. Wow. Thank you. I'm, it's really an honor to be here. Oh, man, the honor's all mine. This is crazy. So, you, Diplo, okay. So, Diplo did an MGMT remix. What was that like? Did you get to meet him or no? No, I don't, I don't remember meeting him. Um, but, uh... Well, okay, a friend of mine uh, knows him, this guy, uh, Stephen, uh, otherwise known as Bosco Del Rey. Cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And he, uh, he, he knows him because I think Diplo got him on a, his label at, at one time. Oh, yeah. It was mad uh, decent. Mad decent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fitting because I feel like uh, that's a perfect description for for Bosco. He's mad decent himself. Like, I know. That's pretty, that's, that's mad cool, you know, to call it a little mad decent, because it's like, it shows what kind of cool guy Diplo is, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I, be, I would be like, hey, mad awesome? Can we call it mad awesome or mad great? Mad amazing. Mad normal? Decent. Mm, decent. But then when you get, like, a good track or, like, a hit record, then everybody's like, well, I thought this was supposed to be decent. And just, I think it gives you a way bigger ceiling. You know, you could just go... Sky's the limit. When you when you tell everybody you're decent, and then everything you do is like better than decent, that's kind of cool. Anyways, I mean, I could talk about Diplo all night, as you know. I always got him mixed up with, um, you know, Dido uh, with Eminem. Yeah, I get I get a little cross pollination in my brain. Dido, Diplo, and then Duplo, which what is Duplo? Like, which is like Legos for really little kids that mm. aren't ready for Legos yet. Yeah, they're so big. There's like six six dots per like a normal yeah, eight they, eight they're dots. Big, yeah. big chunky dots where normally you would have an eight dot brick, a duplo brick uh, would be six dots in that same space. So it's a lot easier for those little hands to manipulate, and they come apart easier. And mm-hmm. um, and they have a really cute rabbit, which I know you know something about at least scurrying around on the ground. Oh yeah. Right. He's, like, he's always like, hey, this patch box way over there on the ground needs, like, rewiring tomorrow, yesterday. And I'm like, oh, man, I gotta go do that. So I'm always on the ground, you know, and then I, I think, you know, he just makes me record stuff in weird places. I get the reverb out of the shower, um, reverb behind the toilet, reverb in the closet. So yeah, totally, man. You know what I'm like. Making your own reverb chamber. Hell yeah. Winning the natural spaces. Tissue box. And you all in and out of them to get, you know, it can be, you know, like third grade, fourth grade. That's just like weird, you know, when you're really not hanging out with people you know. And you're just on the playground, playing kickball. And you look around, you're like, do I go to here? Can I go over there? But, but I suppose, you know, if things get too bad out there in the schoolyard, you could always 
shut down your metabolism and go into a uh, ruminative sleep of some kind. Yeah, yeah. like this. Just shut like, down. Just like that. Yeah. Uh, I think you just. Right, yeah. yeah, I think you just did it now. Yeah, just like that. Oh, you're uh, back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Okay. One sec. <laughs> That's really cool. We're back here with James from MGMT. They're still a rock band. Um, been a big fan of MGMT for a very long time. Uh, probably longer than anyone could imagine. So I'm really thrilled and honored to have James here. Um, I'm just super stoked. I mean, there's so many questions I could ask you about MGMT, about your shirt right now. I love tie-dye. Um, did you make that one yourself? Did you buy it? Where'd you get that shirt? I wish I did it. I wish I, I, I bought it. Uh, it's uh, a good, it's, it's a good scrunch. Right. Have you ever tied yeah, that before? Yeah, it, it kind of goes, it radiates out from oh, this area here. It's a side pinch. Yeah. It's a side pinch. That's a good technique. It's cool. What I can't figure out is how they get the... This part's so dark, and then this part's so light, and mm -hmm. I don't know what order they do it in. Mm -hmm. There's some good separation oh. of color there. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It makes you wonder. Uh, I've done some of the like the blue, the indigo ink Ooh. type of stuff, and that's that's that, that's what I've gotten into most extensively. Do you ever wear hyper color back in the day? 
Yeah, the change, the change, and mm-hmm. the and stuff like that. And you breathe on it. And you're like, look, there's my mouth. I had a really cool one of those that was sort of like a, you know, lot type of T-shirt or like a parking lot, at like a fish show or something. Oh, and yeah, it was yeah. Color and a, a giant mushroom would appear. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that on the show. That'd be a little awkward, but. Maybe afterwards. Maybe we put this in green. That'd be cool. A name like Lizard, you know, people just kind of assume things, but... Yeah, I guess, I guess you got me pegged, man. You got me pegged real good. How many sides you got on that bad boy? That's a good question. Let's see here. Let's count them here. We got... We got one, two, three, four, we have 14 plus eight. We got 22 sides on this bad boy. Goodness. I think if my math's correct, we got 22 sides on this guy. Yeah. It's like a cubic soccer ball. There's something new every day. Now, I would like to maybe visit a universe where this would be a soccer ball. Absolutely. I think everything would just be kind of edgy, you know? Everything would be a little different. Like, the soccer net would be kind of edgy. I've always heard people try to describe the higher dimensions that way. Like, uh, think of the how we're here on the globe, mm-hmm. and it looks like we're on a flat surface. Uh, because we're so small compared to the wow. scale. It's a matter of scale. So, you know, if you were to become gigantic, you would look back and say clearly that it's a three-dimensional ob- round object. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we can't see. Uh, we don't have the perspective to see that we're in a, that, that for example, time. Is this kind of stuff you guys talk about on tour? Or do you learn this at school? I think I'm just... This is when I meet people like you, I'm just completely blown away with these types of conversations. They just open up my eyes to things I've never even heard of before, but I really like it. Yeah, it's just adaptogens, herbal tea, mm. uh, plant teachers. You like chamomile? Is that a good one? I've heard of chamomile. Oh, big time. I love a chamomile tea. Chamomile mm. tea. And yeah, Matt's in all that shit. I mean, he's always talking about mushroom stuff and medicinal things. But I just get, I, I get Doritos and... That's about it. Just Doritos. It's Gatorade. I love Gatorade. You ever, you ever fixed a car? That's right. I'm not very handy with cars. We resort to be experts. It's not yeah, I'm not too, not too handy. I like to pretend that I am. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I do like to... I, I am good at, like, I can stand around and kind of, you know, look and, and tell somebody what they should do. Yeah. <laughs> But um, and that's really good at that. But uh, it's all a front, you know. Yeah. I'm front. I'm just fronting. I went to AutoZone. I heard a guy talking about something on the phone with a guy, and it was almost like they were talking in a language I didn't understand. And he was just like, "Yeah, we got. I got a Chevy. I'm working on a Chevy, like a you know whatever the '89 van. And I got this thing here. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're going to look at the one part, and it's definitely not doing the thing you think it should be. But if you go down there, you find there's another part. You get that that, that one serial plug that's going to work on the other. And I was just like, man, those guys are like gods, dude. They're just like... I don't know, the belt, you know what I mean? The belt might be ready to go. On the... Check, check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Trying to get into the uh, martial arts. Well, I just want to say thank you, James, so much. I think I think this is such an honor, such a thrill. I'm so happy I talked to you. And um, so, ladies and gentlemen, James has brought a special musical treat. He's going to show us, and we're, we're about to hear James perform live on Late with Lizard. So, check it away, James. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, a song from a movie, mm. uh, a movie called Titanic. Uh, this is uh, My Heart Will Go On. Uh, 
cut. Let's keep going. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, you keep going like that's, that's so bad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.